Hi guys, welcome. Thanks for joining us again. Please remember to like and subscribe. What are we getting up to this week, honey? Underwater light styling. That means we're going to drill some more holes in the bottom of Catalpa. All right, let's go get into it. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Hi guys, welcome back. We're going to put a little bit of a hold on the mast at the moment. As you know, we've stepped the mast. We're just waiting on some materials to turn up while we take a break from the mast. So what we're going to be doing is installing four of these Lumatech lights. It's upside down. <laughs> oh, I'll turn that up the right way for you guys. These are the Sea Blaze X2 full spectrum colorful lighting system that we're going to light up out of the water with when we're in a beautiful clear anchorage. It's a pretty straightforward install. So let's open it up and have a little look here. Even though this is on the outside of the boat, pretty much the only hole that runs into the boat will be the hole that takes this wire through. We can't wait to get back in the water and turn these on and light the water up. I'm going to take you downstairs now and we're going to prepare to get these installed in the hull. Me and my big scratch on my nose will head down. We do own a cat now and decided to walk across my nose while I was sleeping. That's life with a cat on board. Right. Oh, Morris, I would never do that. This is our sea blaze. We're going to be mounting somewhere around here. Everybody's boat's going to be different. The reason being for that, there's so many variables on what's inside. You can't just put a light here if there's a bulkhead there or if it's covered in with something. We're going to be positioning two on the port side, two on the starboard side. Instruction wise with these, it's pretty straightforward. This one's actually going to be next to a through hull. It's only because there's cabinetry here and I have access in here where the through hull is. So, and it's not in too bad of a position anyway. The instructions here are awesome because A, they give you a template. Thank you Lumatech for all companies that do that. It just saves time in marking out. Get a template, cut that out, put it on and there's no mistakes, it's great. So what we have is we've roughly got, I've actually extended this up a little bit. So our water line is probably around here somewhere. Now Lumatech suggests around six, which is here and 12 which is down here so they recommend being in that part of the zone somewhere for us we're going to be going somewhere we're going to go about 11 we're going to come in around here somewhere and we've got four of those to go on what we're going to do here is we're going to Drill through the outer layer here first with a slightly bigger hole size than they recommend. And then we're going to fill it with thickened epoxy. And then we're going to re-drill through the recommendations on what they say. The only reason is you guys know we have a core. Instead of water leaking into our hull, if the fitting does leak, it's just going to go straight into the boat and not through our hull. We'll drill a little hole here and then exaggerate it we'll core it out so that the epoxy fills out all this section and then we'll have our hole in the middle and then there's an epoxy barrier all the way around. He's feeling pretty confident so he's just going to go for it. That's the magic spot. That's it. Shouldn't drill holes in the bottom of your boat. Okay so hopefully I've lined this up in a, in a different cupboard and Bella's just behind there and she's going to let me know. Two knocks is good. 10 knocks, you can't see it. <laughs> I don't know what her knocks mean. I think that's a good one. It's gone into a brace, like it's wiggling, that's not right. Are you choking? The hole in the boat now. He's just kidding. Just joking. Got it exactly where I wanted it. Oh. Okay, so I'm not actually going to drill right through with this. this with epoxy 
uh, like so on the inside so that if water does seep in it doesn't go into our hole there will be a core in there so how I'm going to do that is pull out my famous allen key which is not there so well bit of work this one it's a little bit sad okay so you can see the core that's on the inside it's quite a thick layer of glass there but it sort of looks like this we have our fiberglass that's you know so thick and then we have our core in the middle and then we have our glass again there on the inside so we go and drill a hole straight through here if water's to come in and run down it'll run into our core either way so what we want to do is fill this up with epoxy from like here to here and then when we drill our hole through again it'll just be that's just straight epoxy then roughly sort of the size of that there so what I'm gonna do is stick my favorite tool in here stick my little tool in here I'm going to oversize these three holes. They're very specific with their drill dimensions here and what to do because they're bronze screws that they supply you with. They tend to snap pretty easy so they want you to get your hole pretty right. For us I'm oversizing, filling with epoxy and I'll re-drill after and I'll just test it but it depends on your hole integrity whether you've got solid glass, a timber boat, aluminium, whatever you got you just it's a matter of trying the fastener in first and obviously not to put too much pressure on these bronze screws because they'll just snap on you I'm just marking this out now and then uh, we're gonna fill this with epoxy use my template like I said I don't have to be too fussy with these yet I'm gonna I'll have to put the template back up again and remark this again once I've done the epoxy. Perfect. You go from the top, yeah, just fine. Okay. X marks the spot. X marks the spot, darling. So he's done all of the drilling out of the holes. Next step is epoxying. There is a couple of ways to do this. We're just doing this way because it's pretty simple, easy and effective. You can actually, if you want to go next step further, you could either use some Kusa or G10 or something, cut out the inner skin inside the boat, use thickened epoxy to set that in place and that way you've got a complete whole block that's behind there. But I'm pretty happy with this. We'll do a good job with filling with thickened epoxy and then we've also got a sealer and yeah. At the end of the day, some people just drill holes and put them straight in, which, you know, you can have problems, but that way it does get done. We're going to strip this anti-foul off, get ready and fill these holes with some epoxy. Alright, so we've just removed the anti-foul, just giving it a light little rub just to etch the surface, not that it matters, we're only really filling there, but I've tried to clean this surface up because that's where our sealant will sit once we're done anyway. That's about it for now, we're going to look at the filling, we'll put some thin epoxy in there first and I'll try and brush it around as best as I can and then we'll load it up with thickened epoxy. That's where we're at, so another step if you've got a cord hole, but if you don't have a cord hole and it's solid glass, well, all this gets bypassed and you just go straight to fixing. So but for us, it's a little bit longer. A 
And yes, we should have done this way before we anti-fouled. But, you know, we anti-fouled a little bit too prematurely. As you know, we thought we were going back in the water and we did not have these lights earlier than now. So that is why we are doing it now. Everything has not been done in the correct order. We know. And it's just meant we've set out hurricane season on the hard sand. Instead of being in the water, hopefully, a few more weeks, rig will be back on and we'll be ready to go back in the water. Next step is mixing up the epoxy. When that goes in the hole, it's expand. I just go like that and I'm just moving this thinned epoxy all around in the hole first before I put the thickened epoxy on. And that way we get a nice bond to the core and a nice watertight seal. So at the moment, when I move this around in here, I've pretty much sealed the core even before I put the thickened epoxy in. So, yeah, run that around. Get it in there. Loaded our thickened epoxy up into the syringe and now we're going to inject it into the hole. So hopefully the consistency looks pretty good, that it's not going to fall out. We'll see after the first hole. Oh, taking a whole syringe in there. It's going to use a bit of epoxy I think. Okay, that. Seems to be full, but come out that top hole too. And that one. Must be joined. One down, three to go. That's the process. We're gonna keep mixing. We'll get through this and get it prepared for drilling out. epoxy cure overnight and I've given it a light sand down. Here's our lights that we'll be installing today. We have some bronze screws that go with that so I'll have to get these pretty much spot on. Uh, we don't want to go in too firmly with these because we'll snap them so it might be a little bit of trial and error with what size drill bit to use so obviously it varies with what sort of hull material you have and how hard it is. If I don't mention it when I'm doing it, I'll tend to put just a little bit of blue tack in there and smear over it, and then I'll go over that with the total protect. So if I do need to access it later, I just pop the total protect door from the blue tack soft and I can access it with a screwdriver. I sort of do that with fittings like that, cutlass bearings, if you've got a grub screw or that holding it in, put a bit of blue tack in there so when you do come to switch out your cutlass bearing, you can access the star drive or hex drive or whatever bit you've got. Sunday morning, let's crack into it. And I've set that up so if I go right down to there, that should be about my depth. Put a little pilot hole in the middle here and that should be about the right size for the screws. If the screws are too tight, I'm just gonna go widen the holes a little bit, but I'll try that first and there we go. These are all drilled into the solid epoxy. Loosen it the littlest bit. It's snug, but so when you're doing anything like this, it's always good to do a test fit. And a good example is that these screws have come to a stop and I've still got a little bit of play there. So I am gonna have to drill a little bit deeper. So the screws are nice, I'm happy with the way they feel. They're just on the side of getting starting to get tight. The size drill bit I used, I sort of just loosened it a little bit with that. I didn't actually go up a size. I still want it to grip. I don't want to put pressure on it too much because these bronze screws will just snap. So what I'll do now is I'll back these out and I'll just drill them out a little bit deeper and then I know that's going to be good to go. I'm just actually giving them a little countersink just so I get a nice 
bead like an o-ring of sealant around inside there when it squashes in. Inside here it all comes wound up on a little piece. So that little piece looks like this. Inside, so don't go throwing that away. There's your three screws. And in here is a little rubber, sort of like o-ring I suppose, little seal plug that you feed your line through, your wire will come through and then once you've got all your sealing in there, you push that up and that'll snug that up nice and firm. Just about there with my test fit. Beautiful lens here. I don't want to get epoxy and everything and have to try and wipe and I don't want to put acetone or any chemicals over this lens. So with everything I do, I'll just put a bit of blue tape over. You know I love my blue tape. Okay, so I've given that a little etch up. I'm going to get the total protector stick to that. I'll turn this over. Obviously you're going to remove this. 42 is what they recommend, I recommend that too, that's what we use. Sarah's going to be on the inside, this plug. So once I've gooed everything up and fed the wire through, Sarah's going to put this on the inside of the hole like so. She's going to feed these wires through like so. Now that's going to get worked all the way down to the hole, goes through to the inside of the boat and that's going to be pushed against there and if anything some sealant should be spurting out around the side. Uh, we don't want any shortage of sealant and this is like a rubber bung so that, that would nearly seal in itself anyway. I'd be very surprised if these leak. So I know with something like this I'm taking a lot of care, I mask up, I clean, I use acetone, I really take my time, I do a dry fit, I test, I make sure all the screws go in nice and easy, it fits flat against the hull so I know when I'm going to apply the sealant I'm not going to have any troubles. Cleanliness is your best friend because you really don't want to launch your boat and have done a half assed job on this and then water starts leaking and then you've got to pull your boat out. So we're not going to film inside the hull, it's just going to be the wire coming through and this is the bung that's going to sit in that hole and uh, have the sealant and the cable coming out of it like so. Reversed obviously on the inside. I'm going to feed this bit through. Sarah's on the inside here. Uh, she's going to take these wires. You got it darling? Yep, she's got it. So she's going to pull that through. So I'm going to apply my sealant here, around here, and then I'm going to just tuck it up here and I'm going to put a little bit more in there. Can you pull it in a little bit, darling? So there's not too much. A little bit on these holes. So I'm not using a drill to screw these in or electric drive of any sort. I'm doing it all by hand because I don't want to over tighten and snap them nor do I want to strip the threads. But apart from the aesthetics of this when you turn them on overnight, there's two other things that really I enjoy with these lights. A, the fish life and the marine life that you can attract around your boat, whether it's you want to swim with manta rays overnight or bring the sharks around or bring the bait around or just bring whatever wildlife in the water is around and you can visually see them. The other thing is, if you do get fouled or you do get something stuck around your skeg, your prop, your rudder, this here will light up this whole area here. So if there's a problem underway, I don't need to be holding a torch and trying to pull a rope off or a log that's stuck between the skeg and the rudder or anything like that. I can, I've got two hands, I can either have one hand on the hull if it's rough and I can work away without the boat crashing into me. So that's the part I like about it. Obviously we've done a lot of cruising through Southeast Asia and there's a numerous amount of junk and fads and rubbish in the water. So to be able to light this area up and hop underneath is uh, awesome. All right guys, the reason I use all that blue tape, this is the reason. I can just get there now, I can smear that around here, like so, one swoop around. Get the rest of these in. This is the template that's actually in the packaging. They do have a template in the instructions. This is cardboard. The instructions is a little bit thinner paper. I found that a little bit easier to use. And for the template, it's pretty straightforward. What I'm doing here, I just leave that till the last bit. I'll put a little bit extra in there, and a little bit extra on there. I've also marked the top so they're all the same way. Uh, 
I say the probably the hardest thing on this job is just making sure you don't undersize the holes for these because you'll snap them and then you're going to be in all sorts. And we're trying to get the screws out. Uh, also cleanliness. It's always your friend when you're dealing with sealants. You try and keep the water out. Always use your screwdriver and not an electric drill. You can choose to use tape like I do. Or you can choose to make a big mess and clean it all up. Either way works. As long as you've got a nice clean surface and you put plenty of this on. Hopefully, when you launch, you don't have to uh, be hauled back out because you've done it properly. Alright, that's that part of the job done. So we know it's all clean, it's been acetoned, it's wiped down, it's been etched. We've roughened it up with 80 grit on all the surfaces. Now we're ready to apply some Total Boat Total Protect. And we're going to go for a chemical bond between the anti-foul and that so we can do it in one hit. So we're going to put two coats of Total Protect on, followed by two or three coats of Spartan Total Boat Anti-Foul. That's the task, we're just going to let that 42 under attack off a bit before we run the Total Boat over there. This is a Total Boat two-part epoxy primer, barrier coat. So this is what we used on the bottom originally when we stripped it back and we used this to seal it all up. So this is what we're going to use to go around the bronze to the boat. We'll give it a couple of coats here. I've also got a couple of spots underneath the boat because they move the boat and move the blocks. So I'll get them while we're at it. We'll let it sit for its induction period. Let both uh, chemicals here get to know each other. We'll get applying this. I did actually get a little bit heavy handed on the sanding there. You can see I've gone through to the glass. So, yeah, we might just put a little bit of uh, Total Boat Epoxy Barrier Coat on that. Just before I paint these over, you can see I've actually covered in the screw holes with sealant like here and underneath the sealant is a little bit of blue tack on the top of the um, screw head so if ever you need to undo it it makes life really easy and all the growth doesn't get caught in it yeah that's what I was thinking about we'll put two coats so this is the first coat we'll let that tack off a little bit and then I'll reapply tacks everything this stuff Oh, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. We can't wait to get in the water and turn them on. Thanks, Lumatech. We are so stoked. What do you suggest? What did you learn from that project? Oh, I think it all went to plan. I think it went really well. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, the hardest bit's just filling our core. What would you Otherwise, say to the people who are worried about putting holes in their boat? Oh look, they're half inch holes really. There's one half inch hole that goes in and you know it's it's sealed up. It's uh, pretty good. I couldn't see it leaking if you do it properly. It's going to be worth it. Watching those manders swim under the boat. Oh, oh yeah. it's going to be worth it. Swimming at night time. Yes! This was the first stage or the first install of lights. We've got a few more to go. We've got the spreader lights, so we'll be installing those. We've also got some internal lights, some courtesy lights and some weatherproof lights. We'll get through all those and we'll show you the process in that and then we'll show you the process in wiring it all up and showing you the POCO system. Stay tuned, there's lots more to come around the Lumatech lighting. And then we'll show you once in the water, we'll let you know what we think and all of the feedback on after using them and cruising with them as well, so. Yeah, yeah. Woohoo! Pretty excited, and uh, like we say, we do have a clear coat to go over these. Yeah, that'll go on just before we splash. So when is that, Captain? Honey, when are we going back in the water?
Ask no questions and you'll be told no lies, darling. <laughs> oh, one day, one day we'll be back in the water. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. Stay tuned, like, subscribe, you know what to do, and we'll see you on the next one.